You know, and what I tell parents, for those that are listening, and if you've got a parent that is, that is uh, or if you've got a child that is using something, drug addiction or drug substance use does not define who they are. It doesn't define them. Plus, who gives a shit what somebody else thinks? Would you rather have your child alive or would you rather have them, you go to their funeral? Mm -hmm. Death is permanent. They are not coming back. Where you are now may not be where you came from. The choices you make today may spiral out of control or spin you in the right direction. Discover a riveting, true story of how Carlos Vieira nearly destroyed his life and lived to tell about it. Stand up, stand firm, believe, make it happen, and live through the madness. Knocking doors down along the way. And don't miss others telling their powerful stories on our podcast. Visit kddmediacompany.com. This is Knocking Doors Down. Your host, Jason, here with Mikey and our guest, uh, Flint Anderson, of course, with uh, Pain, uh, Parents and Addicts in Need, and the Don't Hide the Scars podcast. Good to see you, Flint. How are we? <laughs> Thanks, Jason. I'm good. I'm good, man. Great to see you guys. It always is. Always a pleasure. That was my Flint. pro wrestling intro almost, right? You know. <laughs> now, coming to the ring. Uh, Weighing in at... <laughs> yeah, no, we... Uh, Weighing in at way too much. <laughs> The, the reason we wanted to do this when we got in a discussion, of course, uh, Flint, you work so active in the community, not only in recovery, but with knowledge of what is going on. And, and uh, fentanyl became this hot button topic for this guy. Right? Fentanyl. Getting, fentanyl <laughs> and cocaine uh, is get, why the main reason, because we've had we've had you on here. It's yeah. great to see you. It's always great to see you. But we're like, you know, fuck, call Flint. Call Flint. <laughs> get him in here because there's a lot of things that I need cleared up because cocaine was my drug of choice. I could have bought my dealer six cars and put his kids through college twice with the amount of money. So fentanyl, which is offing people potentially the first time they use it. Absolutely. But what I don't, I'm just going to jump right into it. Jump into it. I'm just going to jump right into it. fuck into it. So what I don't get is why fentanyl? Now, before you answer that, Flint, drug dealers, yeah, I know that they don't care about your well-being, obviously, because they're selling you narcotics. However, they care about their income. Yeah. You know what I mean? They want their money to come back. So it's not necessarily chasing a bigger high because when I was doing coke, I didn't want a bigger high. I just wanted to keep doing it because I felt great. And everybody who does cocaine knows that it wears off depending on how good the coke is in about 15 to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Then you do another bump. Then you do another one. And then eventually you run out and then you buy more, which is putting more money into the drug dealer's pockets. So why add fentanyl if it's killing people? Don't you want returning customers? You would think so. Yeah. You would definitely would think so. But I guess what they're trying to do is they're just trying to make their, if they're selling cocaine mm -hmm. and adding fentanyl to it, it is, it's a speedball mm -hmm. in essence. It's sort of like, you know, it's sort of like doing cocaine and heroin. Yeah. Fentanyl's just stronger. I was going to say it's an upper and yeah, speedball. I get it. But like downers, I avoid it. I stayed away from that. I hate downers. Yeah, but man, I'm telling you right now, downers, fentanyl, any kind of opiate is is the leader mm -hmm. right yeah. now. It is it is out there. It is beyond what we've ever seen before. Um, but to answer your question, it that, that that's really the million dollar question. Mm -hmm. Why are drug dealers lacing even cocaine with fentanyl? Again, it, it's going to give the end user the better high. Mm -hmm. But these guys don't know how to lace something properly, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because basically the amount of fentanyl that can fit on the top of a, of a pen, of a stick pen, can kill you. Mm -hmm. So how are these guys actually lacing this stuff? They, I don't think they can measure it properly. So they're just guessing at it. So every time you, 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 you take a bump, every time you, 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 know, you snort a line, it, you are playing Russian roulette mm -hmm. every single time because nobody knows, the dealer doesn't know how to lace it and the end user doesn't know exactly how much is on there. 
but they're taking the chance anyway and they're dying mm -hmm. yeah now is fentanyl easy to get yeah okay really? so like is yeah. it like over the counter kind of shit or man let me tell you something okay so if you really want to get neck deep into this thing uh -huh. I started talking about fentanyl about six years ago mm -hmm. because six years ago, China and Russia started developing fake, not, not fake fentanyl, actual fentanyl because it's a synthetic, mm -hmm. right. it's, it's man-made, right? They were shipping it into the East Coast. So as it was coming into the East Coast, all of a sudden now you've got people dying and nobody's knowing, nobody's knowing why. And it never really reached the West Coast up until about two years ago. We really didn't have a problem with it, but it was huge on the East Coast. By the time now that it has reached the West Coast, it is, the high is so good. That's the problem. The high is so good. Fentanyl is 100 times stronger than morphine. Fuck. Yeah, it's 100 times stronger than morphine. These kids are literally buying it on Snapchat. Drug dealers are going on Snapchat. There's all these code words that these kids have, sure. right? And they're having it delivered to their houses at night in the middle of the night when their parents are asleep. It's so easy to get, you probably have it delivered here in 15 minutes. And it's the most deadly thing out there. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm bouncing around a little bit here, but it's but it's everything's being laced with it. Right. Whether it's a real Norco, real Vicodin, real Percocet, um, real Xanax, or the fake press pills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because nobody knows when you're buying when you're buying pills, you know, on Snapchat or you you don't even know if you're getting one that's real. So they're faking, they're, you know, they're pressing these pills. I can tell a fake one. Most people can't. But then again, they're lacing fentanyl with it. So one of the problems is these kids will split like what they, uh, uh, Xanax. But one, one half may have yep. not enough on it and one half may have more on it. And the kid that took the half is dead in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm still trying to figure this shit out. I'm still trying to figure out why number one these kids are doing it in the, and it's just not kids you know and what i call a kid i mean i'm i'm yeah. methuselah's age so you, you, you know <laughs> any anybody anybody 18 to, to 40 is a kid um oh, shit. but uh, but again I'm, I'm trying to figure out w why they're doing this and we can't figure it out they know it's deadly they know it yeah but you know like me when i was in my addiction days i didn't care yeah i really didn't i call it the imaginary line we know where that line is that if we go over that that yeah we may not come back but we're willing to take that chance not only to get the better high but also to make sure we have enough so we're not getting dope sick every day mm -hmm. yeah Right, so you're gonna you're gonna take that chance, but even at my worst, and again, guys, you know my story. I mean, you know, I was taking eighty Vicodin a day yeah. at the, at the at the end of my using. I and I and I snorted heroin a couple of times. That was it. Mm -hmm. But no matter how dope sick I got, if I didn't have any pills for a day or two or three or whatever it was, I never went further. Sure. I, there was something that scared me about heroin. So I never, ever went any further than those, those two times. Well, I feel like that's just the king of drugs. When you think of cocaine, meth, all that, when you say heroin, it's just like that's the fucking top dog. In it, my opinion, that's it, just what I think. It is the top dog. Yeah. But see, in my day, you know, because of my age, I mean, from a very young age, man, we were t we were taught you don't even go down that road. Right. You know that was skull and crossbones, mm -hmm. you know shit that 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 you would see about heroin, and and so we didn't see a lot of that when I was when I was growing up, and then we were afraid of it. Right. Today, there's just no fear. Yeah. Well, I think that the, the, you a you take a lot of lost individuals, especially for talking about younger generation. 
that in, various, as we've talked before, various institutions are failing them. That's at home. That's at yep. school. Uh, whatever else, their social circle, so they gravitate towards those people. And like you said, that bigger high. When my argument with Mikey was, you know, sure, any business logically wants repeat customers, but they kind of don't give a shit in the fact that, as I said, okay, you take 50 people that you've now sold that fentanyl-laced whatever to, and let's say three of them die, but out of the 47... Maybe they shared, each of them shared with one or two other people. Mm -hmm. So your business is still growing. It's just how it works, period. You know, it's no different than anything else that, sure, they want return business, but what's getting them a return business is the people that lived and said, man, this is the biggest high ever. This is the best one ever. You got to try this out. And like you're saying, as simple as through social media interactions or whatever, they can have somebody drop it off no matter their living circumstances, if they're still living with mom and dad or whatever, and there's their supply. And if little Johnny has uh, Timmy over and they both try it and they both live, well, then there you go. And maybe Timmy goes, tells his other buddy, and Johnny brings over Paul next time and so on and so forth. So they right. still have a method to grow those that are using, especially with that additional high. It reminded me of, of when I became aware of ecstasy, never did it or anything, but I had friends that went to raves and all this stuff, and one person ended up dying, you know, mm -hmm. overheated and died. But those other people, did they immediately stop doing it right then and there? No. No, 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 no. Going. And that's, I get what you're saying there, but everybody knows on ecstasy, you have to stay hydrated. You will overheat. That I've known that since before I even seen an ecstasy pill in real life like that was like a unwritten warning label that came with the drug dealer when he handed you ecstasy stay hydrated mm -hmm. but if there's little pen size amounts of fentanyl that'll kill you that 50 probably wouldn't be 47 that 50 would probably be 20 of them died right Could be. yeah you know what i'm Could saying be. so Possible. yeah it can grow but if it's growing with fentanyl your whole team is eventually going to die off because that shit is a hundred times more stronger than morphine. So I don't think it's as simple as a business growing. I think it's, I don't think, uh, and you know, drug dealers, I, I don't want to, it's not like I'm sitting there. Street pharmacists, if you will, <laughs> uh, are some of them are very intelligent. Extremely some of them are intelligent. very smart. So like if, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to put fentanyl in my shit so my customer base doesn't die immediately. Because cocaine will kill you. You'll mm -hmm. eventually die if you keep doing it. Right. So they're not going to die immediately. They're going to keep coming back. Yeah. I'm going to keep getting money from them. Yeah. Why are you going to risk them dying and not coming back? It just doesn't make sense. Again, but that's the million there's dollar... There's no warning label yeah. on that. Right. There's a warning label on ecstasy. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like we were talking about energy drinks, for example. They're horrible for you. Yeah. But... If you buy an energy drink, oh, that just didn't do it. Didn't do it, man. I need another one. I need another one. I need another one. That energy drink is going to fucking love you as their customer. They're not going to add something in it to where all I need is one and I'm good. No, you want your returning customer. Yeah. And I would think that would be the same theory. And I guess I just haven't done coke long enough or in such a long time to Thank where it's God. like, damn, shit has changed. Because A, I could never get that shit delivered to my door. Right. I had to make that uncomfortable drive and go to the uncomfortable house right. with the uncomfortable people <laughs> around me thinking, crap, I might get shot or stabbed. The guy high as fuck right. throwing firecrackers And in I the feel like if what? you're going to do drugs nowadays, you should go through that too yeah. it shouldn't be just snapchat coming to your house if you're gonna do it fucking do it or right. just don't right you know? <laughs> no 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 now they're getting a pizza delivered with their drugs exactly yeah. like yeah. I mean, no you go through the uncomfortable <laughs> process of ringing the doorbell and not right. knowing who the right. fuck's gonna it right. reminds right. me when you wanted to talk to that first girl and you had to go through her dad answering the phone absolutely you don't get but right. except anymore. her dad has a knife with all of his you know friends <laughs> on the couch ready to kill you well we used, we, used, we used to put a 38 right there and, and a shovel sure right when the when they when the young man will walk in and say you know what we've got a 38 and a shovel they'll know they'll never find you yeah and oh, guess oh, yeah, who's just digging to intimidate them guess know? who's right. digging i'm not digging <laughs> right. so you're taking that shovel right, right. but right. i just go I, it's just they the simplest way to put it they don't give a fuck they don't care yeah. see that part is the part that gets that, me it's right, like you're I, not, yeah. I i just don't get that part i feel like they don't care about you as a person but they care about their money they care about their money but and you if you die, there is no money. Right. But again, you're, you're, you're talking about people 
that don't have a moral compass. Mm -hmm. They they don't. They, they're, they're, there's nothing legitimate about these these drug dealers. They don't care B because, Mikey, there's there's ten more kids behind the one that died. Mm -hmm. I'm watching a thing the other night, and I think it was called Varsity Blues. Oh yeah, right. It yeah. was it was all all about that you know the 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 college scandal thing. Yeah, not the not the not oh. the football. Movie. I was talking about the no, high school football. No 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 no. no. <laughs> this one with that Lori Laughlin. Remember when she with her with her kid and uh -huh. going to SC and yeah. all that. Okay. Anyway, so so my point here is I'm they're interviewing these kids that aren't getting into college. Mm -hmm. Now, these are 17-year-olds, maybe 18-year-olds, seniors at least, right? I have never in my life seen so many kids that absolutely had no social skills whatsoever. They were filming these kids sitting there crying, weeping. I mean, looked like that you, you were ready to put them into, into a home somewhere because they weren't getting into their first in, into the college that are first choice. Mm -hmm. Those are the kids that I worry about. They have no social skills. They're focusing on on one thing. That kid, if I'm a drug dealer, that's who I'm going after. Right. Because now they're lost. Mm -hmm. They don't have anything else to fall back on. They're the ones that are going to take something and take something like a fentanyl immediately. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not kidding. I mean, I, I, I can't even explain well enough the looks on these kids' faces. I'm thinking, my God, they don't know how to do anything. Mom and dad have done everything for them. They've never had to do one thing on their own. They're lost. Mm -hmm. they're, to they're, they're totally lost. Those are the, that's the new drug user today. Sure. It's, it's, it's not the, I mean, it is, but it's not the, what everybody thinks is a typical gang kid. These are, these are kids. Look, man, we, we, we had, we had six people, six young people die in, in the last three months in Fresno of fentanyl overdoses. I mean, these are kids that moms and dads are, are highly educated. They're employed. They're, they're, they're decent human beings. And they walked into their kid's bedroom and the kid had headphones on, eyes rolled back in his head, white foam coming out of his mouth and dead from a fentanyl overdose. We, 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 six that we know of, 17 overdoses in one weekend in Fresno. One hospital didn't have even Narcan in the emergency room. I'm sorry. How the fuck do you not have Narcan in the emergency? This is comes right from a mother's lips to my ears. Her kid overdosed. They got him in. They sent an orderly running around the hospital trying to find Narcan. Hmm. Every it just boggles my mind how how we are not doing more to address this this issue. Not not only address it, but try to solve it yeah it's it, it literally blows me away deas in fresno homeland securities in fresno i work with these guys when dea shows up you know there's a problem yeah there, there, there's literally a task force that's in fresno and san diego in the state of california those are the only two spots so when they show up you know it's bad and they're they're going out two three times a night sometimes mm -hmm. to these overdoses I don't know where else, we don't know what else to do. You know, you, you, you can't smell this stuff. You can't see it. Right. it. There's it's it's odorless. It's tasteless. You don't even know if you're getting it. Mm -hmm. But they're willing to take that chance. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I was telling Jason, too. Like, it can't be for substance because it's probably not cheap. Right. Or is it cheap? No. Not particularly. It's not real cheap, but right. it's not real expensive. But either. like baking soda, 
all that. You, I get that. I yeah. get why yeah. that's yeah. thrown yeah. in right. there. Right. Right. You get a you get yeah. a rock that big. You chop it up, throw in some baking soda, throw right. in baby laxatives, what have you. <laughs> now you got a pile <laughs> that big. Now I kid you not. Oh man. no, he's right. Yeah, no, I, I kid you I know. not. He's right. And, I was always regular during those days. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I, on horrible I, bosses where Jason Bateman, where, where they accidentally did coke, and he's like, wait, real quick, I'm gonna go take one more quick dump. <laughs> like <laughs> it was so fucking accurate. I'm right. just like. Like, so it was wow, perfect. That is spot on because I know what he's going through. Yep. And I mean, I guess it's just one of those things we'll never know as to why. It's well, and like you're saying, is we're not having a foundation of coping mechanisms. So it's not just a lack of social skills, but much like any of us that turn to addiction is we don't have the coping mechanisms. Right. So they're they're starting out on a totally fucked up foot, even if there's not a trauma involved. Right. Fifty one fifty is power. The power to overcome, the power to persevere, the power to set your life on a course for success. When you're faced with the challenges life throws at you, you focus and do what is needed to go beyond what is required. So stand up, stand firm, believe, make it happen, and live through the madness knocking doors down along the way. We are 5150. The, and let me just bring up one more thing about Narcan. Yeah. Please. Nobody, this is, again, one of my big bitches, and I've been talking about this for years, but nobody seems to want to follow the lead here. There were a lot of years where I was not in favor of Narcan. I'll just be honest with you. Simply because Narcan, I was at a drug conference in Atlanta, Georgia one time, and, and there was a big discussion on Narcan. Should it be sold to the general public or should it just still be left with first responders? And I stood up, there was a row of mothers from the Boston area. And, uh, you know, I'm sitting there going, you know me, I love to talk, so I'm, I'm gonna go to the mic. <laughs> and and I uh, look at this one lady and I said, ma'am, with all due respect, I said, you know, how old's your son? 26. Does he live at home? Yes. Do you feed him? Yes. Do you clothe him? Yes. Uh, do you buy his electronics? Yes. Does he have a job? No. Does he drive a car? Yes. Is it yours? Yes. On and on and on and on. I said, oh, by the way, you're allowing your son to, to use heroin in your house. I said, why would he ever want to change? Yeah. Now you, now you want Narcan in your house. So in case he overdoses, you can, you can save him. I said, why would he ever want to change? Yeah. I said, can I move in? I said, I'm a, I'm a recovering addict, right? And I'd love to move into Right, now. exactly. So, but, but, but now that, that was seven years ago. Mm -hmm. Now we, we move forward. Now I am a proponent of Narcan because it is saving lives. Yeah. But here's the rub. And this is what nobody thinks about. And I want to shout this from the mountaintop. Once you give somebody a blast of Narcan, what does Narcan do? It's the reversal agent to pull you out of your opioid overdose. Right. The second thing it does is it wipes out all the opioid in your system. So guess what? Now you're going through detox. Here come the withdrawal. Here yeah. come the withdrawal symptoms. So yeah, they got, they saved the kid. Great, fantastic, I'm all for it. He's in the hospital. Hospitals are not equipped to now tell the parents what to do next. Because the hospital's only going to keep him there until he's stable to move. Sure. Right. And that's going to probably be within a day or two. So now this kid is out two days in. He's jonesing like there's no tomorrow. His ass is right back to the dealers again. Sure. Mm -hmm. Nobody's talking about that. No, the, you know, again, hospitals, fantastic. But damn it. Okay. You have to have something. In, this is a, this is an epidemic. Screw COVID. You want a pandemic? This is it. Mm -hmm. How do you not have something in place? Now, there are hospitals that will say, yeah, okay, w w uh, we need you to call XYZ Treatment Center or we, you know, we need you to do this. But if that kid isn't put somewhere almost immediately, he or she is going to go right back to using the same damn drug because you know, you guys know as well as I, the last thing we want to be is dope sick. Yep. We will do anything to prevent being dope sick. So, all right, America, what do you do? Yeah. That's that. That's the rub. That's that's what nobody knows how to do, and nobody's even talking about that. 
Because we don't, have, there's clearly no structure in place with that understanding that, okay, from there, now Johnny's got to go directly to a facility. And if he's 16, is, guess what? He's going nowhere. Right. Because there may be one, oh, I'm so, yeah, there is a place in California that will take, but but it's a 30-day program. That's it. Okay. And and you're done. And again, that's that's okay, you know, to start. But you can't get a minor in anywhere. Yeah. We can't take them at New Perceptions. We we can't take minors. Huh. All our treatment centers in Fresno cannot take minors. Betty Ford doesn't take minors. No treatment center does. So what do you do with these kids? Yeah. It, that's the million dollar question. And that's where everybody's missing the damn boat. Yeah. Because how do we get them? A, now they're going to go through the DTs big time. Big time. Let alone make sure that they're monitored because that's one of the things too. People don't really, the DTs can fucking kill you. They can. And, and now, it, now, and it now, happens. but, and it, and it does happen. Now, again, but with opiates, again, depends on your age. Sure. Right. You're really not going to die from opiate withdrawal. You want to, you think you're going to, yeah. right? Yeah. It's bad. I mean, the, the the best suggestion I could tell people is to watch the movie, The Basketball Diaries. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Right. With Leonardo Ooh, DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. when, when he's laying down in the snow and he's going through those withdrawal symptoms and then he's in the apartment and he's going through those withdrawal symptoms. Let me tell you something. Out of all the, all the movies I've seen, everything I've seen on addiction, that was the best. Yeah. That was the best acting job of somebody going through withdrawal symptoms. And I tell people that, that are involved with the pain organization, I say, when you watch that movie, think of me. Because that's what I would go through. It's hell. It's, it's almost indescribable. You, can, you can't even describe to somebody what, what withdrawal symptoms from opiates are like. And everybody thinks, of course, you know, it's over in a couple of days. No. That's, if you do it cold turkey, that's, that's a two to three week fucking fiasco. Yeah. You know, and we have people out there right now. I, God, I wish I could say their name. <laughs> but, you know, they're promoting their, they have a 90% success rate. Right. Oh, stop the bullshit. Okay. Recovery rates are 7% in the United States. 7 to 10%. Yeah. That's a 90% unsuccessful rate. So what they're trying to say is 90% of the people that come in might leave the 30-day program. Yeah. That's it. And by, yeah. But guess what? If somebody's in your program, you better be 100%. Yeah. Not 90. Yeah. You should be 100% while they're in your, in your, in your program. But the, 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 the point here is we are still miles away from even, even addressing this issue the right way. Now, I could go far to the right and say, okay, you want to know how to get rid of the heroin problem? You call Afg Afghanistan, number one producing heroin country in the world. Mm -hmm. We have our armed forces over there guarding poppy fields because it's, it's about 80% of their GNP. Holy shit. Yeah. I didn't realize it's that high. It's that high. You call Afghanistan. <laughs> hey, boys, you got 72 hours to get out of Dodge because we're coming in with F-16s and we're going to nuke every poppy field out there. Yeah, there's going to be collateral damage. But these people don't give a shit about us. Right. That's where all the heroin is coming from. Then through India, then it comes through Holland. It, com it comes through the Netherlands. There's so many different routes to get to the United States. And then, but, but, but how do you get, look, the, my point is you're not going to get rid of the drugs. Yes. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's got to be spent on education somewhere. Well, and as we've talked many a times, education is prevention. It is prevention, but schools won't do it. And I've, and I've, you know, look, there's a, there was a long time. I was really blaming schools for a lot of, a lot of this. And I, what I mean by that is that they weren't participating correctly in, in, in trying to solve the problem. Sure. They were trying to solve it with red ribbon week, mm -hmm. right? There's not a study out there that shows that red ribbon week even has any effect whatsoever, especially on junior high and high schools. 
sixth graders? Yes, maybe. Red Ribbon Week is a joke. And most pe people don't even know what Red Ribbon Week is about. Mm-hmm. Right? They don't even know it's about Kiki, the DEA agent who got murdered in Mexico by the Mexican cartel. That's why the, the DEA started re wearing red ribbons after he got cut up in little pieces and mailed back to the United States back in the 70s. It's all about fun with these schools. They have the ability to bring people in like us to really talk about the truth here. They don't do it. And it's frustrating. Those kids, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying every, every school needs to have this full-blown drug problem, but pretty close. Yeah. Because that's where we're at. We'll take Clovis Unified. 95% of our clientele went to a Clovis Unified school. It's one of the best school districts in the country sitting right in Fresno. <clears throat> Could you imagine what they would be like if they didn't have a substance abuse problem? They'd be even better. Yeah. Heads and tails right. above it. And again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, this is, we're not going to get rid of the, the, the entire problem. That's, that's never going to happen. Right. But if we don't do something and do something fast, this epidemic that we're facing makes HIV look like cold and flu season back in the 80s. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Man, guys, I mean, there's, there, there's so much I could just go off on. I mean, another, uh, and we never know the real numbers. Sure. When a minor Why dies, do you know half the time when, 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 when the morgues come out with, 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 their with their numbers? It's called an accidental poisoning. Hmm. So it doesn't even fall into the accidental no, overdose no. category because they're a minor. School shootings. I've done my research on school shootings. Almost 98% of those were involved some sort of drug. Whether it was a psychotropic drug, antidepressant, um, antipsychotic mm. drug. Kid wasn't taking enough, took too much. Parents were allowing him to, because him to, girls just don't shoot up schools. Allowing these, these kids to monitor their own medications. Right. Almost everyone that we've done research on schools since the 1800s on school shootings. They, they, they happened way back when mm -hmm. as well. But nobody's addressing that either. What's the underlying problem? You said it earlier, Jace. Drugs are the coping mechanism. What's the issue? Yeah. What's the real issue going on here? Why aren't, why aren't, Schools doing more. That kid is in a school six hours a day, seven hours a day. I'm not asking teachers to be parents, but I'm asking them to give us a helping hand, at least a fighting chance. Yeah, and how do we get state by state by state getting on board to... It's funny, even my kids, I taught, you know, and they're only 11 and 12 about this when they... You know, what are classes you took in, in high school... Well, did that help you? I go, no, but if there was a mental health class, we had a sexual health class, which was great. It but if worked we had for a, me. If worked we, for me. Yeah. If we had a mental health class and one for actual booking, bookkeeping and accounting and how to personally manage money, you would talk about two very beneficial areas that you yeah. talk about that 26-year-old still with mom. Clearly no coping skills, no desire to get out in the world, doesn't see himself as a contribution to society whatsoever, and everything's taken care of. Again, why the fuck would they change? But right. if we present them with real actual facts, real actual facts, and, and being that where I am through recovery, and their mom's great about this too, my kids have been spoken to very openly about mm -hmm. these areas. Because I didn't want them to be a latchkey kid of sorts that, you know, I had phases of that because of my father's addiction and my mom keeping it together. But these kids, like you said, you know, it's like, well, I'd be a bad parent if I just put them out there. Well, no, you, you're kind of fucking up by not letting them fall on their own faces right. and getting those coping skills. Right. Couldn't agree more. Could not agree more. 
And but and how do we do that within a school system too? It's, and and make it so clear that it's so much more important than 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 Johnny and Susie understanding a, a, what a parallelogram is. Exactly. But you, look, here's the other side to that. Was that from my Instagram? <laughs> I don't know. Did you put that up there? <laughs> I said, you know what? I'm really glad that we learned about parallelograms and not taxes because this was a gnarly parallelogram season. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? forgot it's you like, put that shit I up. I posted that. I'm like, don't you fucking... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you came up with it. I have a but. lot of issues with that. It's like... A, just with schooling and what they're teaching you and what they're not teaching you, it's like, we're going to teach you this when really it's like, teach them about credit. Teach them how to buy houses. Right. How all that works. Not... I, I don't even know what the... It's been so right. long. Well, because... But you get what I'm saying. I, I do. I, <laughs> trust me, I get it. Yeah. Because... I, I get it. I mean, the school system can't give you the self-esteem and self-confidence that home does create, but it can help and educate as it should with the social self-esteem in situations because there's so many different types of areas that we have to freaking cope in life. Yep. We have to cope with loss of a loved one. We have to cope with setbacks career-wise, right. with, you know, competition if you're athletic, what health. So much of us, as you know, Flint, I've been through it. I didn't ask for a lineage of thyroid issues, you right. know, or right. whatever it is. You just have to deal with shit. You it's just, just have to deal your with it. life, the only one you get. Exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a one-time go through, man. <laughs> I mean, that's that that's it. But but I also want to say this about schools because I've learned quite a bit over this past year. Um, schools also are are they're they're hamstrung to a certain degree. Absolutely. You know, teachers are threatened. They really are. Administrators are threatened. I know a lot of administrators that they're, they're not backing down, but it has them concerned because they're being threatened from the, 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 the mom and dad that are lawyers. Yeah. They're also being threatened by the moms and dads that aren't. Mm -hmm. That might be a gang, you know, affiliation somewhere. Teachers have a lot to deal with. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not asking them to solve this problem. What I'm asking them is to participate in trying to solve some of these issues with, with substances because it's not going away. This is growing. Everybody seems to think this is, this is just a secondary issue. It's not. This is, this is one of the main issues in our country today. We've got people dropping like flies. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I am very afraid for, the, for these generations behind us. Yeah. I really am. Yeah. You know, and now, I mean, <laughs> California, it's a misdemeanor. Everything's a misdemeanor. Where's the consequence? Where is the consequence for these drug dealers? Some people want to, they, they basically want to open up shooting galleries. Yeah. So you can go in legally from eight to five and you can sit in there. They want to do it in San Francisco. New York's done it. Uh, places in, in, in Pennsylvania have done it. Where you go in and you can literally shoot meth, heroin, whatever you want. All day. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. All day, all all day long. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a piece back to some Susan Talamendis Eggman. That was her name. She's some some assemblywoman from San Francisco. I I said, do you do you think that everybody? I said I'm a recovering drug addict. I said, do you think I don't? I am only going to use between eight and five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're okay. You're going to give me my drugs between eight and five. Great. Okay, but what about the rest of the time? Spe gonna, especially if you're functioning, because normally what are you doing during those times? Working. Right. I, I mean, ag again, our society's just gone batshit crazy, and it's, and it's driving me crazy, right. to, to be honest with you. Because I, you know, I see the mothers that walk in and I, you know, into our office, <clears throat> excuse me, that have lost their kids. Sometimes it's their only child. Yeah. And they're the ones that had to find them. Laying in there. And my point with that is this. So many times I want to tell these moms, especially the moms, what, what time did you find him? Well, three o'clock in the afternoon. Well, what's he doing sleeping at three o'clock in the afternoon? 
One mom said she went into her went in her son's bedroom, knocked on the door. It was noon. Oh, he's he's just sleeping. I'll I'll, I'll come back and check on him later. She goes out. She does a little yard work. Okay, a couple hours. Walks back in, knocks on the door. He's still he's still sleeping. She says, "I'll just give him a few more minutes." He's been dead the whole time. Parents, you got to wake the fuck up. When you're, it is not normal for your kid to be up from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. playing video games. It's not normal. And at, and at worst, you need to at least check on them. Mm -hmm. yeah. At worst, you need to at least check on them. You know, everybody, God dang it. Every parent says, "Not my my kid will never do that. He'll they'll 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 never touch anything." It's, my parents probably would have said the same thing, right? Yeah, for my, sure. mine too. Mm -hmm. I think my mom was deeply worried. To be <laughs> fucking honest, I think well, of me just saying, "I only did blow once, mom. I went to smoke pot like any normal college kid, but boy, that alcohol once the trauma shit matured yeah. up here, it it went off." Yeah. No, it's, it just amazes me. Even I mean, I've been doing this for 15 years, and it still amazes me how many of these parents don't think that their kid is going to experiment with something. But experimenting with something today is going to kill them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, the, that's one of the biggest problems. This isn't just about going out and smoking a joint on a Saturday, trying it for the first time. You know, then I got to love it. You got to love the parents that come in and say, well, you know, they can drink in, they can drink in my backyard because I take their car keys. Long as nobody drives. You Long can as nobody here. drives. Yeah. I'll, I'll, come, I'll come back to the parents and say, well, let's see. Do you think they might have a spare key in their pocket? That's number one. I said, number two, okay, they're drinking in your backyard. Can you tell if somebody's drunk or if somebody's high in heroin? Mm -hmm. Can you tell if somebody's drunk or somebody's just did an did, did, you know, eight ball? No, dad, you can't. I can I said, but you can't. Yeah, I could spot that shit a mile away. Right. <laughs> you would have to tell exactly. me. Uh, Gee, Dad, what's in their pockets? Mm -hmm. My kids are screwed. My future unborn <laughs> children. Oh, my gosh. Dad, I'm going to the movies. Bullshit. Let me see your eyes. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, you fucking liar. <laughs> right. Little junior right. son of a bitch. Right, right. I'm going to lock your ass <laughs> yeah. in your room. Don't bullshit a bullshitter. Don't bullshit okay? a bullshitter. I see those pupils yeah. the size of pennies. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry liar. I went off on that no, thing a little good. bit. You know, be, be but, sorry, but, 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 it's, but it's enough to drive me nuts. Well, I think it's good because, you know, we have to... To put that out there, we need to question our ignorance to so much. Yeah, and it's and I and I get it because I know for me as a parent, you know, single dad, when kids are with me, is I try to be very, um, very decisive in my decision making. Um, has it backfired sometimes? Sure. Do, and, and you have been through it. You know, it's like, no, I'm the parent and I'm right. Then all of a sudden, about two hours later, you're like, oh, fuck, uh, my kids were right. Yeah, oh, yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's one of the lovely things about parenthood. And I mean that, right. that it is lovely. My parents but. are still like that. I'm the parent and I'm right. I'm like, I'm 32. I've learned a couple things over the years. You know, they're like, no, I'm older. You're dumb. Yeah. Lovingly. Love them to death, though. But of course. That's just yeah. how they are. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, guys. You know, it, it's um, I'm gonna we're we're, we're going to keep fighting the battle. Sure. It's all we can do. You, you know, yeah. that's that's all we can do. And I had to learn a long time ago. It's one person at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's basically it. We're going to lose some. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, along the way. Um, but but I, I I hate losing people because of ignorance. Yes. I I think that bothers me more than anything. And I think carrying the, as you know, a lot of our work, especially with the Carlos Vieira Foundation, you know, those programs to end the stigma and a lot, and why mm -hmm. we talk about, of course, you know, for if you're a first time with our conversation right now with Flint, you know, we don't just talk about addiction, mental health, physical right. health, trauma, all these things because of the stigma that is placed upon it. And I can see it when you're in an affluent neighborhood yep. that the last thing they want to do is admit that Johnny or Susie, their child, has some sort of problem and now it changes their standing within the community, which yeah. is why when Carlos, uh, Carlos Fierra, Telling about telling me about his book that he was going to do because he is a very successful businessman. 
that I could get on board and be like, yes, this is a thing we can do with this podcast right. in conjunction with the foundation because his story's out there. Right. Put his balls on the line, and it's helping people. Right. And we know because we get the emails. Right. We get the messages. Right. It's and, so important what, what Carlos is doing, what you guys are doing. It, it, it really is. And breaking that stigma is it's extremely difficult to do. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it really is. I mean, I know of, of, of seven or eight families that – Again, high up in their careers, even a judge, you know, they've lost kids to this and still will not even admit it. Yeah. Still will not admit it. Because if they lost Susie or Johnny to cancer. Whole nother story. Yeah. Whole, whole nother story. But every, you know, and what I tell parents, for those that are listening, and if you've got a parent that is, that is, uh, or if you've got a child that is using something, drug addiction or drug substance use does not define who they are. It doesn't define them. Plus, who gives a shit what somebody else thinks? Would you rather have your child alive? Or would you rather have them, you go to their funeral? Mm-hmm. Death is permanent. They are not coming back. One of the stories I tell I tell parents is this. I said, imagine, I said, you've just you've just lost your son. And it's it's uh, it's Christmas. And when you walk into your house, there's photographs of all your family members. Maybe the photographs are on the piano, maybe they're on the bookshelves, maybe they're on the walls. Okay. And everybody comes to your house every Christmas. And so during the course, so, so this Christmas, your, your son died. So next Christmas they come and everybody's picture is there, including your deceased son, okay? And now it's five years later and everybody's still coming to your house for Christmas. And all of those pictures on that piano or on that wall have changed. Everybody's gotten older, everybody's gotten grayer, whatever, new babies, whatever it is. And your son's picture is still there. It's still the same. That photograph's never going to change. Yeah. Never. Think about that. I mean, you lose a child. I can't even imagine losing a child to, in, in, in any way, yeah. let alone to an overdose, something that could have been prevented. Because all you had to do was get real with them. Don't cover it up. No. Stigma, again. Who gives a shit? Do you think those people that you think care about you actually care about you? No, they don't. Doesn't matter that your kid goes to treatment two or three times. I don't care. But you got to start somewhere and parents can't be afraid and you can't be afraid to drug test your kid and you can't be afraid to get in their face and you and and you cannot be afraid to step on their rights. Yeah. Do you know how many times I hear that? Well, well I don't want to step on my kids rights. They have no fucking rights when they're in your house and they're under 18. <laughs> I agree. OK, yep. even if they're over 18, they have no rights. It's your house. Yep. Yeah. What are you so afraid of? And again, you know, we have parent support meetings every, every Wednesday night. You know, we had, we had 45 people on Zoom last night, okay? That's not even me. I mean, when we meet in person, it's, it's we have 60, 65 people. And we've got, we've got this, God, I'll, I'm just going to say it because I don't care, okay? <laughs> I got this one mom on there, all right, who 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 is letting her son make a choice on what treatment center he goes to. Why? Well, that was my question, okay? Well, because, you know, um, he's, he's, he's a grown man. He's 21 and stupid, I told her. Seriously. Yeah. I said, you're, let, you're putting his deci- that decision in his hands and you're paying for it? <laughs> I said, come on, mom. You know, time for you to grow up. Yeah. Quit being their friend. An enabler. Right. Quit being their friend. Quit quit enabling this kid. And look, and it and it's different for everybody. Parents are gonna take X amount of time to, to change. We all know that. But but again, in these times, 
you don't have much time. Mm -hmm. Because that, and by the way, this kid (coughs) did relapse on fentanyl last night. Again, knowing it's going to kill him, and I'm not blowing HIPAA because I'm not giving up anybody's name here. Sure. You know, so for the guy that wrote in last time. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But this kid goes out and he he uses again, knowing full well that he could die. And that's the mentality of this age group. And that's the person you want to allow to make the choice for what rehab facility they yeah. go to. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to my world. <laughs> uh, yeah. Any other areas we want to touch on, Mikey? Do we want to do some, uh, now that we have some random questions since the last time Flint was here, do we want to jump into some of that? Any other stuff that you want to cover? We got some fun ones, right? Yeah, we got some fun ones. Kick us off. All right. So, Flint. Random questions here. Uh, if you were on a deserted island and you had just one movie and one album, what would they be? One movie and one album. This this one you guys are not even going to understand, but I'm going to tell you right now, the movie would be Jeremiah Johnson. Really? Why? There is something about that movie. You know the movie I'm talking yes. about? With Robert Redford? Yeah, I went to film school. Come on. Ah, there you go. Don't try to test me. Uh, Okay, all right, all right. Um, That movie, for whatever reason, is very peaceful to me. Hmm. It's, it's, I I admired his character. Sure. For doing what he did. Again, very simple life. Just kind of gave it all up, right? And went to just live. Yeah. And there's to me there's just there's just something peaceful about that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. What about music album? Man, I'm a music guy, so this is this is a, this is a tough choice <laughs> cuz I'm a jazz guy at heart, oh. right? But on a desert island, I'd have to bring in a whole different variety. I'd probably go with the Beatles White album. Oh yeah. Well, and plus it's a double album, it's so double you, so album. you make out pretty good. <laughs> I'm trying to think yeah. of what's a peaceful movie to me. I mean, we get Helter Skelter on Helter, that got one. A we Helter get to uh, come, that. you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Blackbird, the, all of them. Oh, Blackbird. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, great song. Yeah, those. Yeah, those would be. Those would be my choices. I there. could see that. What about if it was jazz? Are you Coltrane guy? Are you more of a New York, a New Orleans, or you just y- like you know, it all? I, I, I do. I, I like it all. You know, um, I, I do like Coltrane. Um, I do like Miles Davis. Uh, I love Miles Davis. Um, but I also like Al Jarreau. Mm. You know, yeah. Al Jarreau is yeah. one of my all-time favorites. You know, even though he's not a traditional jazz guy, you know, um, God, he's good, man. I mean, the brother is just too good, okay? He's too good. Um, But then again, I I, I mean, New Orleans jazz, I just absolutely love that. Yeah, the bombastic nature of it. You you, you bet, man. There's there's, there's some good ones down there. Right on. Yeah. What do you got, Mikey? I'm sorry. I was just thrown off because we always pick movies and albums of what we would like, but you're on a desert island. You're probably going to go crazy right so you want to watch something peaceful what's a peaceful movie the have you seen the internship with robert de niro where he's older and he gets the internship yes. with anne hathaway yes, yes. it's yes. a really nice yeah. peaceful yeah. feel good movie. yeah it is a feel good movie like people get screwed over but like right. how her dude cheated on her but he yeah. was just such a nice guy de niro i would probably say that one that guy's wow a dick. don't worry about it he's a dick <laughs> <laughs> he's a dick what are you going to do? Probably that one. Yeah. That's, perfect. Anyways, Cheat. That's perfect. So we were looking up these questions. They mean nothing. So I'm going to ask you just dumb questions. Okay. <sighs> Would you rather fight 10 chicken-sized horses or one horse-sized chicken? <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw you, that and I was well, like, that's I fucking I forgot hilarious. you added that shit to wow, the list. That's fucking wow, hilarious. That what is would hilarious. you rather fight? <laughs> ten horse or one or ten chicken sized horses yeah. or one 
horse-sized chicken. I think one horse-sized chicken. Really? Yeah. Horses are huge. Yeah, Flint yeah. Just they're, kick they're, them. they're huge. Just right in the nuts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just, just kick them right there. No, because because you got ten ten coming at you. But they're little. But they're li- yeah. That's, you that's, could that's, punt that's, those little yeah, fuckers. That, that's true. Yeah, I, I I could I could punt those. But, but you know I'm but, horse. You know, but chickens if, with their but, big ass beaks the size of a horse. Think about fucking, it this way: if he's on a deserted island. And hey. he's got the movie and the music, and he kill, kills that horse-sized oh, chicken. Oh, we wouldn't do hey, that he's to you. Good. I'm eating good. We man. wouldn't but do that to you. We wouldn't have you have that conflict on a deserted <laughs> island. No. <laughs> that, now we're just being, that's just animals. Because we're, we're the uh, the omnipotent movers of, of horse-sized chickens or yeah, some I shit. I love that. One. I got like 20 uh, of them in my backyard. All right. Other than Mikey, uh, any pet peeves? I'm just kidding, Mike. Hanley. I didn't any, get that. Any, I was going to say, because I have a shit ton of pet peeves. <laughs> no, any, I said any, other than you being his pet peeves. Oh, peeve. gotcha. Pet peeves. <sighs> Ignorance. Yeah, clearly. Ignorance. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, and stupidity. Because with a lot of people, you can't fix stupid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? I, 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 seriously, to me, I, I, I think that is my biggest one, is stupidity. You know, then, then, no, ignorance first, then, then stupidity. Mm. Yeah, and they both play into that lack of curiosity. Yeah. You know. You know, there's a there's a saying down in the south, and, which is which <clears throat> is, oh, bless her heart. Oh yeah. Well, you know, you ever do your you ever do your homework on the south? Bless when you say, oh, bless his heart. Yeah. Okay, that literally means you're an idiot. Yeah, I used to get the. <laughs> I say that oh, all the child. time. <laughs> the head shake. I say bless her heart all the time to the girls who ask me to join their OnlyFans page. <laughs> I'm just like, oh gosh, bless her heart. That's, if I want to see a boob, I'll just Google it. <laughs> That's mighty um, sweet of you, gal. Yeah. So, if they were to make a movie about you, who would you want to play you? Uh, Any actor in the world. Any actor in the world. Who would I want to play me? You know, I, th- this again may sound stupid, but I'll tell you what, I I don't think he's a fabulous actor, but I think he's a, a, a real, I, again, Redford. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, again, I don't think, I mean, he's done some Academy Award stuff, but but I don't think he's a fabulous actor, but but to me, he's 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 just got it, Yeah. you know? He's 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 got got he's, the it factor. He's got the it factor, oh, man. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, he's got some class. Yeah. You know, him and Newman and it, oh everything god, is oh, like, is that yeah. just the best? Newman was one of my favorite. Oh, but who would you pick to play you? Whew. Jay Baruchel. No. <laughs> be Jay Bar- Do you know who Jay Baruchel? No, is? I don't. I was watching the the. He had a guest appearance on Letter Kenny, uh, which is a Canadian TV show. I'll show you a picture of it. Everybody says I look like he I looks get, like Jay. I Baruchel. get the cro- I'm crossed between him and Ben Affleck. I'm gonna go Affleck because oh. I want someone that looks better than I do playing. When me. somebody plays you, I feel like it has to be better. Like uh, Johnny Cash and Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin All right. Phoenix yeah, is right. a way better looking dude. Johnny Depp and George Jung. Right. Johnny Depp was way, way better looking better. than yeah. George Jung. Oh, George Jung. I would yeah, pick absolutely. Shia LaBeouf for me yeah. oh I, I like that I feel like he can nail whatever personality anyone has because he himself has like 30 yeah, like of them like 40 of us so um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd yeah. go Affleck for sure um, how many windows do you think are in New York Flint <laughs> that's another, that's another one I read. That's uh, another. Wow! One. How many windows well, in New York? Well, leave. first of all, I have the answer too. So. Well, first of all, the mafia controls all that. That's okay, true. so they, so yeah. as many as they want. Yeah. Um, I, I, there, there has to be. I don't know, three billion. I, I'm just kidding. I don't have the answer. Oh, I have no idea. You think you know how many windows do you? <laughs> no. Go ahead and shoot out two, Bobby Bones. We could ask Darren. He'll know. Yeah, right. Yeah, I say Darren would know. Yeah. 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 Uh, give us one more before we uh, wrap it up. It's your turn, man. Is Under it? The windows. Oh, shit. Okay. Let's see. What do I got here? Um, I'll, if you could have dinner with any one person, living or not, who would they be? Huh. I got to go with my first thing that pops in my head. I'd be Abraham Lincoln. We were talking about him earlier. We were. Ju- I was really? going to say, we were just talking yeah. about Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because that man... Literally, <laughs> I don't know how he made it through that civil war. Yeah, you know, I mean that's that was that was fighting on our own land, you know, and he was in the middle of all that mess. Yeah, I would really like to pick his brain. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he had to make that huge decision that, that, you know, I'm doing what is best for the union. Yeah. Yeah, and he stuck to his his guns. Yeah, and we're still fighting that shit. And we're to this still day. fighting that shit. You know, but but I, I and I no, but I res- I respect that because you know something. I I think there's way too much today. There, everybody's trying to please everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, and I look, guys. I know there's a there's people out there that don't agree with with my methods. They think I'm too much of a hard ass. All right, but you know something. I put my head down on the pillow at night. And I sleep very well. Mm-hmm. You know. And I and I know that it's that the client comes first, the the, the person comes first, family comes next. And like I said, I may not be right all the time, but I know the heart's in the right place. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like with Lincoln. Sure, you know, yeah. heart was in the right place. If the heart's in the right place, how can you go wrong? Yeah, that's how I look at it. That's good. I still struggle with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Flint's left us on a good positive note. Let's Anything do Anything else, Mikey? No, let's hear the let's hear the final word, Flint. What you want to leave us with? What I want to leave you with? Well, I'll tell you what. First of all, I love you guys, uh, honestly. Oh, hey, yeah, likewise, I mean, we love you. I, I mean, this is, you know, coming up here. I'll come up here three days a week <laughs> all right, to sit down and talk with you Hell guys. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. You know, keep doing it and give Carlos my best. Please, yes. please do. And thank you for being a resource for us, you know, because... Uh, you know, we people sometimes say, "Oh, you got a counseling thing because you speak so well." I go, "No, I just speak from my shit." Right. Uh, so it's nice to have an educated resource such as well, yourself and Darren you. and and Payne and the whole organization in general. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, if I could just leave people with one thing would be, please, you know, get in your kids' business. Yeah. Know know where they're going. Know what they're doing. Know who they're hanging out with. Check their cell phones. Don't be afraid. You know, to check those things. Don't be afraid to 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 drug test. If your gut's telling you something, go with it. You know, I don't want to see anybody lose a child over this. It's it's people cannot imagine. You can't even imagine the depth of pain that 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 a parent goes through by losing a child. You know, and especially to this. So just stand up. Look, love is inherent. Love will always be there. Your child will always love you. They may not like you for a while, but that's okay. Oh, well. Mm-hmm. Because, again, I'll end it with this. Would you rather have your child like you or, or hate you or be dead? Yeah. That's, that's the bottom line here. And everybody is susceptible to this right now nobody is immune so watch your kids man absolutely that's right anything else mikey no that was good let's leave it on that clint thank you you're welcome guys anytime